And welcome back to the True Patriot Podcast, folks. We have another guest from the Colorado Kayak Fishing Club here. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Ronnie Romero. Ronnie, how are you, sir? Good, man. How are you? Good. And for those of you uh, who have been following along, you know that we are now a member of the Colorado Kayak Fishing Club. As we make this journey from the bass boat world over to the kayak world, this is uh, probably Colorado. Correct me if I'm wrong, Robbie. The, we are the largest club in the state, right? For kayak angling? Yes, largest kayak club, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. Um, Facebook group is huge. A um, lot of influence out there. A lot of... Uh, a lot of reach uh, through through that and the mailers and uh, through Turney X. It's uh, it's an awesome deal. So, let's talk about you, man. Um, what uh, what is it that you do for uh, for a living? How'd you get into kayak angling, and what do you do for the club? Um, again, my name is Ronnie. I'm a State Farm agent down in Pueblo. I've been with, doing insurance for 15 years now. Nice. Uh, but Pueblo is my home. I used to travel and do it for a long time, and got the opportunity to fish in a lot of different States, really all over the country. Um, but I ended up back home and a kayak fell into my lap. I fell <laughs> across their Facebook page. I'm fortunate enough to be in Pueblo. I got a great fishery in my backyard. Yeah, you do join that first tournament. And, and here we are. So I'm in my second year now awesome. uh, as sponsor manager for the club on the board. And, uh, that's really all my, my role is does to manage sponsor sponsorship donations, help the, the sport, and the club grow um, and make sure I, we give a lot to charity. That's, you know, the main goal behind the club in general, but really just supporting it from the inside has been my role. Well, dude, you know, and after talking with Alex, you know, about uh, a lot of the history and peace, um, Alex is one of the vets definitely uh, within the club. He's been there forever, lifetime board member, it seems like <laughs> in some role or fashion. And, and that support piece for the, for the club, it really is a huge deal. You know, it's the roots, it's the, the, the pioneers of the club wanted this to be, you know, the kayak angling and grow the sport, grow, you know, the, be a welcoming, but also uh, running a, a, a dual parallel is that sponsorship piece, man. It's the, it's the, you know, giving back and the way we give back is getting local organizations you know, coming to you and talking with you about, you know, you showing them what the benefits are of that, of that sponsor. So that's, that's gotta be a huge role. That's got to keep you busy throughout the week. It does, but it, you know, it's been fun. I mean, I, I sell insurance. It's really boring. So uh, <laughs> working on the sponsorships and, you know, something you're really passionate about. Um, it just kind of stirs it up a little bit. And, you know, when I first started, we we're in the middle of COVID and when it came to, you know, bait makers and different, tackle company it was it was very difficult to get some sponsorships because they were it was hard for them to commit which i understood i mean it was tough for for any small business and any any big business really so it was tough so i really thought outside the box um with the help of the the rest of the board kind of chipping in and giving me ideas but you know we ended up getting just sponsors that aren't involved in in fishing at all um it gave them the opportunity to to advertise to a certain you know niche that it's almost four thousand colorado based kayak anglers in one group that they can advertise to which there's only a few hundred of us that are you know active tournament participants but there's a lot of activity on on our page regardless so it's just a great opportunity for for them to be able to donate something to charity give it to a good cause and still get some sort of advertising quality to a very particular you know set of people and that you just keyed on something that is huge because um you know Advertising promotions is what we do on the True Patriot side. And one of the keys, one of the trends that started to take place in the tournament angling, even on the on the uh, 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 big boat side, glitter boats, even over there, was that non-endemic piece. I mean, that is so huge. Grabbing, you know, showing these companies that otherwise may not see a direct connection to our industry, showing them the value and the fact that, you know, 
you, you and I were talking about this off air, dude, we, we are, cause we're our demographic, right? We are brand loyal to a fault. I mean, it's it, once we get locked in with a company that we trust and we know, and it becomes part of our routine as it, I mean, I don't care if it's the same coffee on tournament morning or if it's the same this or that, I mean, right. you know, that old stain, I'm not superstitious. I'm just kind of stitious, you know, a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and I think that plays huge. So that's, that's awesome that you've seen the same thing. I mean, it's, it, I think at the end of the day, man, it's, it's, it's fishing, right? It's, yeah. it's the, regardless of what vessel you do it from, or if it's from shore, it's still fishing. And if you're in a tournament, you're in a tournament. And that's that, I think at the end of the day. So that's, so that role there, you, you work at grabbing and talking with um, local companies around to support the club for what, for tournaments, uh, for the season, let's talk about the different types of sponsorships out there that companies can, can benefit from by working with us. So it's, it's a little bit of everything. We, we love to try local as much as we can, but, um, you know, sometimes you have to go to some of the, the bigger brands and, and some of the brands that are very specific to kayak angling or really market that, you know, niche already, but, and they support, you know, clubs all over the country and other States, um, they typically, they love that grassroots advertising. So they usually jump in with us too, but, uh, but yeah, I manage that relationship as far as sponsorship levels. That's really me to, to put together. So the nice part is we're not big enough to where it's not like we can't get creative. So right. we have different levels based on different thresholds, you know, zero to 250 gets you this, you know, up to 500 gets you this, uh, but really it's, it's, it's up to really me, the board and the business owner that's trying to to make it happen and, and wants to be a part of the club and, you know, be a part of the charity. So I've gone all over the board with different, different sponsorships. <laughs> Sometimes they just want to do a discount code and it's like, well, that's fine. I mean, well, we can't provide a whole lot on the advertising side to our Facebook group for just something that's going to be this, but, but you're still on our website. There's still a discount code there. You know, anything that we can do to help. Cause that, at the end of the day, I'm trying to collect for the charity and for the club but I still want to make it make sense for that, that particular business. I'm not, I don't want to just, you know, take their money if they don't find any value in it. So, um, well, wouldn't you say so we really can get creative. That's how those long-term good relationships happen is if there's that give and take, right. I mean, it's, it's important that you do find ways to make it valuable to them like that. Yeah. And sometimes that's, that's the first step in. I mean, if, if they give us a discount code one year and, you know, they're tracking that discount code and, and club members are buying it and they're liking it and they're talking about it. Maybe that next year makes it that much easier for them to commit because they, they see they're getting, you know, some return on their investment and they might like the club and the club likes them. It just kind of works out. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing the last, I guess, a year and a half now. This will be my, my last year as sponsor manager. Um, but it's been fun. We've got lots of new sponsors, lots of, uh, continued sponsors, um, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of relationship building. Well, you know, and it, and it shows through because I mean, well, we're going to get to this and I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull the curtain back just yet, but there's a huge deal that, you know, got you and I uh, chatting here. Uh, it's what caught my attention. I'm like, all right, someone's making moves over there. So we'll get to that. But to go back to your point there about that, that discount code, one of the things we were talking about off the air is just how brutally expensive our sport is. Um, I don't care what level you fish at, uh, to get quality gear, it is expensive. So dude, a good discount code, you know, that, that gets people using a, a particular bait or using a particular product. That's a great gateway. If you ask me personally, because, you know, I'll shoot, I'll, I'm looking for those, you know, those, those 20% or, you know, whatever. Cause that's, if I'm not paying retail for it, that's as good as, you know, money in the bank, yeah. just because, usually we're not buying in onesie twosies, you know what I mean? We're buying in bulk, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, it's uh, it does come in pretty handy when, uh, when you start getting that stuff. So yeah, that's a, that's an awesome deal there. Um, so of current sponsors that, that are currently supporting the club right now, and I know you guys have, have got a ton there and I don't want to put you on the spot with it, but who would you say comes to mind that's been with the club a really long time out there that uh, that's been working with us for, for quite some time? What do you, is there any that stand out in that list or is it kind of more revolving or? It's a little revolving. I actually, um, 
if, if you, I know you talked with Alex, you probably don't uh, <laughs> know this is about him. He's an IT guy, so he's big on Excel. So I'm managing an Excel document that he's been, he probably started this, I'm assuming, back in like 2014, <laughs> but that tracks all of our sponsors back back to the beginning. So right. I, mean, I can see it and I add a little star next to their name to, to keep track of it. But I mean, Waterline's always been a big sponsor. It looks like this will be their fifth year with us. Nice. And I think the other person that's been a uh, uh, Yak Attack, Jackson Kayaks, and another local State Farm agent, actually, Justin Aller State Farm. He's, I think he's the longest. I think this might be his eighth year. I think he might have wow. been a big part of the board when they first started. That's awesome. Yak Attack, that's a, that's, a, that's a heavy hitter in the industry out there. That's awesome that they get behind their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They've been, they've been great. They're really easy to communicate with. That's um, you, you realize you know, how busy some of these business owners and um, I was assuming with them, it's probably just a marketing director them, you know, contacting, but, but they've been great the last couple of years, ever since COVID, instead of sending out product, they just send me a PDF with, with uh, gift cards. And because it's, it's easy for me just because I, I have an office where I can print and laminate stuff. I just go ahead sure. and print them that way we can actually give a physical card, you know, out at the, at tournaments, but that's nice. Um, yeah, those are those are some of our big ones. We've got a lot, and there's a lot that's still coming in this year. Hopefully, I get things finalized in the next couple of weeks. But we're we're looking for another record year. Pretty excited. So, and it's still plenty of time for folks to to cash on because we, I mean, the first event hasn't taken a, taken you know place just yet. Right now is like the rigging season, and we're waiting for the ice to come off. Um, not to go off on too far of a tangent, but how's it looking at Pueblo right now? Opening uh, up. Pueblo looks good. No, Pueblo's, Pueblo's wide open. Oh, yeah. is it? Okay. Nice. Yeah. Maybe three weeks ago, we had a little ice in the coves, but um, I don't think there's any left at all. Um, it, it was real cold down here today, but I don't, not enough to ice up or anything. And it was super windy. So it's, it's wide open. So I'm a transplant Colorado native, right? I've spent 20 plus years out here, but for the last 10, I was back in Minnesota. So I'm kind of back to being a noob again. Down in the Pueblo Res area, does it ever ice completely over? Does that happen uh, or? It it does. It's probably every, so two years ago, actually maybe it was just last winter. Last winter it did. And another kayak guy, uh, Jeremy Pierce went out there with me and we took one step and fell through. There was a guy out there <laughs> and there was some kids out in Turkey Creek, but I mean, you can do it. It's it's not safe ice. I wouldn't recommend anybody do it, but if you're an experienced ice guy and you take out the, the right gear, you can do it. It's, it's you're not going to, you know, you're not going to catch a limit, but, <laughs> but you might. <laughs> It's not, not ideal. Let's just say that, you know, and I don't know why I'm asking half the time, just because I'm not a nice guy. Trust me. The whole time I was in Minnesota, the winter time is where I wear my fuzzy bunny slippers and I do map study. You know, I research, I do a bunch of stuff online and I rig in my nice heated garage. That's, uh, that's what my, uh, uh, my winters are are left for. I'm just, I'm not into the, the ice game. I like soft water, man. That's (laughs) be it in the boat or in the kayak. Doesn't matter there. So awesome. Awesome stuff. So let's go ahead and get to it. We've mentioned this before. Um, Waterline uh, is has been a long time uh, sponsor of the club, but this year kind of kind of different. I, I mean, this one seems to be like you know, the the grand slam. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and talk about this this awesome and, and tell the folks about this awesome news here and what what they're doing for the club here for this this season. Yeah, we're super excited about it. We we kind of tried to put something together last year, but it was inventory was just too low. We just couldn't get it done. But uh, Jim, the owner at Waterline uh, this year, donated a brand new Hobie PA 14 360 for us to give away. I mean, it's it's crazy. We've never had anything even close to it. So we wanted that, to make sure like that the we Cadillac get, of guy. I mean, it is. It is. I mean, yeah, it's it's crazy. So we're very excited to do it. I mean, especially being you know, the, you know, a kayak club to give away something over $5,000 as a prize is, is awesome. And we, we wanted to make sure we encouraged everyone to participate and everyone to try and join and not, you know, just cause someone can fish one tournament and they, they may not be in the running for angler of the year. So it's, it's hard to get people excited if they don't have the time to really commit to make a push yep. uh, to rank high. So we did things a little different and we're going to do it mainly as a raffle. So any, any tournament you fish, any actual series in-person tournament that qualifies you for angler of the year counts as a raffle ticket as an entry. And at the banquet, we're actually going to 
spin a you know spin a, a tumbler with live raffle tickets in it, and we're gonna draw someone's name that's gonna win this win this uh, kayak. And, Dude, that's insane. And, yeah, I mean it's crazy. I mean there there might be someone that fishes one tournament. Yep, and and wins this thing. So so we'll see. I mean you you have up to ten chances to win because we have ten tournaments. If you if you fish both series, you got five bass and five multi species. So right. Plenty of opportunity to win. Hopefully this year, if people pay for a tournament and then last last thing, they can't make it, hopefully they don't ask for a refund and they just keep their raffle ticket and call it a day. <laughs> That's right. But but we'll see. It's uh, super exciting. And like I said, we're hoping for a record year as far as participation anyway with, with things loosening loosening up with the with COVID. It, it should be a, a much bigger opportunity for us to, to really make an impact on the charity. And we're, we're really trying to give back to the, the Boys and Girls Club on our anniversary year. Yep. It's the the first charity they did. So we're hoping for 10 times the original donation. So I think we can do it. I love it. I love the, I love the shooting high goals like that. Alex and I spoke about that a little bit. And so that's huge. Um, you know, that, uh, to aim for that and go for it and, and, you know, re- regardless of the outcome there, you know, it, you, you're guaranteed going to shoot and probably land higher than you ever have at this point. So, well, and we will do, I guarantee you, we'll be doing what we can. We've, uh, I'm, I'm in for four of those events um, this year. There's one event that has a little bit of a scheduling conflict with that I can't make because um, we're, we're fishing uh, with the, the uh, Colorado Kayak Fishing Club, but I'm also doing the, uh, the Kayak Bassmasters and I'm doing one national trail, the All-American. I'm going to be uh, trying yeah. to get in like five events for that one. So um, have you ever fished any of the All-American stuff? Yeah, I fished the All American Championship last year at Truman, and oh, no kidding. had a blast. Um, I didn't fish great. I mean, you're an Ozark guy. I didn't know what I was doing out there. I don't know uh, if I'd call me an Ozark. I've been to the Ozarks, <laughs> and I love it there. But <laughs> so I, I, I had never results. I guess I had fished a, a couple of the lakes, and mainly smaller lakes when I was out there. I didn't really get to fish the river systems, but you know, because I was shore fishing, I was working. I didn't have a kayak back then. I was just shore fishing when I had a little bit of time. But yep. uh, I had a blast. I caught a ton of fish. I just couldn't find the black bass, man. I was catching white bass like crazy. But I had yeah. so much fun. The All American. It's a great, great tournament. I mean, I, now they moved it to spring. I think I'm even more excited. Um, I won't fish it this year, but next year. Well, I guess I got to qualify, but hopefully I get, they take top 10 from both of our series. Yep. So if you're top 10 in, one, in either one of our bass or multi-species, you qualify for the all American. Um, and it's a, it's an awesome event. Like I can't wait to fish that one again. So the Colorado kayak fishing club is, is not only a KBF, but also an all American partner. Yeah. Yeah. They take us both and no they take both kidding. series. So KBF is only bass. Right. You got to be top 10 in bass, but on um, all American, you can be top 10 in either series and they'll take us. Dude, that is fantastic. I had no idea yeah. that. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're, if you're heading out to any of those, we got to connect up, man. Cause I'm going to be, I got like five on my list that I'm going to be hitting and Truman is one of them. I've been to Truman before. Um, I've actually done my, I'm kind of, I wasn't happy to go back there with a boat, with the bass boat, just because that thing is a minefield um, of, is. of stumps and deadheads. And knock on wood, I've never ripped the low end unit off of a boat and I don't plan to anytime soon, but on a kayak, dude, I'm like, I'm kind of giddy about getting a chance to get back there. I'm like, oh yeah. Now, now yeah, I, you can, now I know the areas I want to get, get in into. There. Yeah. It's kind of scary. I mean, coming from here where we don't really have oh. that at all, <laughs> but when you get out there and, and it, once it gets windy, it's, I mean, it's, it's a little intimidating if you haven't really been in it and we had some we had some brutal weather on one of the practice days. We had like some 25, 30 mile an hour winds. It was kind of wild. And then I want to say on Saturday, well, one of the tournament days, it rained all day long. Yep. I mean, all day long. I had never been, I mean, if I was at home, I would have, I would have just went home, but it was tournament. So we, we stayed out there and yep. my, my rain gear was not <laughs> prepared for even that rain. My <laughs> kayak kept filling up with water. I mean, it was, it was brutal, but I still had a blast and I'm, I'm so glad I stayed out there. I mean, I wanted to, to go in a few times, but I, I toughed it out and didn't even catch that many fish, but I'm, I'm glad that I toughed it out. It was quite the experience. So like right here, live on the air, I'm going to admit something that, that I, I need to ask you. So in that event, when I got all my skipper plugs in and, and the act starts filling up with water, what the hell do you do? So it's actually a, it's a body weight thing. So you pull a scupper plug. Okay. And you lean the opposite way 
and that water goes down that plug. And then as soon as it goes down, you shove the plug back in. Rock on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I learned uh-huh. that the hard way. But that, that's <laughs> See, how you do it. And then you just you, gotta have, you wanna have you wanna have something to bail water anyway. So whether it's a cup, a sponge, you want you want something to bail water. A so, shoe. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever <laughs> you've got. So I've got a big sponge that's in mind that I'm I'm a little picky about how my kayak is. Well, when it's not dumping rain. Yep. Um and so I, I soak up most of the water like the whole time. Or even I have like a just a rag to wash my hands and I'll throw it in the bottom. And then when it, when I see it's full of water, I'll just rinse it out. Just depends on what the wind's like, but Roger that. yeah, that body weight trick really works. If you need to empty out where the scuppers are at. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've got uh, this, I've got the new canoe unlimited. And so I've got a ton in there. Um, yeah. and they seem to be strategically placed, but I started thinking about that going, Oh, well, what the heck does a guy do? Yeah. They, they do make some, uh, some, I think they're called one ways where they'll, it'll only let water down. Oh, slick. Um, I, I'm in a native Slayer. I, I don't know if they make it for mine. I haven't really looked into it yet. Just uh, it's not really an upgrade that, that got me excited, but I know th- those exist. So there might be nice. some plugs that you can get to keep water from from coming up. Nice, nice. Well, and not to go, I, of course, two anglers get talking. We start talking about stuff. Like, yeah, sorry. To go back to, <laughs> no, 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 it's my bad. I'm the one that took us there. To go back to Waterline, this this is huge, man. And I think what this, from from. Uh, I still, I'm still an outsider, obviously. I mean, I'm, I'm brand new to the club coming in, I'm brand new to the kayak fishing world uh, coming in. I love the fact, uh, number one, that I'm, I'm a rookie again, hot damn, you know, 49 and I could be a rookie, but the testament that this shows is number one, the credibility of the club. Number two, the reach of the club. I mean, we have, I mean, for those of you that are in the non-endemic side of this, that are watching this, that don't know, this is, I mean, I am a new canoe guy and unlimited. I love the company. And I love my, my kayak that, uh, that we have, but we, we call it as we see it in the, the Hobie, you know, 360 P I mean, that is, that is an amazing craft. Okay. It just is. And you pay for it. I mean, <laughs> that is not a cheap craft. So the fact that Waterline is putting that up there, I mean, that just shows how much they support, you know, what you, you know, what we do uh, out there, what the club does, and it's they believe in the reach uh, of that. I mean, I think that's a good testament for other potential sponsors and current sponsors to see, dude. This is not, you know, this isn't, you know, run out of somebody's backyard here. I mean, we're, we're right. hitting, you know, we're hitting a lot of people out there. So I think that's phenomenal. Um, I did actually go visit Waterline and pick up a piece of gear from them the other day there. And it's, uh, it's kind of a neat, uh, neat shop, lots of inventory they have there in Loveland. It's yeah, uh, they're, they're getting a lot, a lot of stuff in. And I know that a lot of stuff was on backwater for a long time. They didn't, you know, nobody could get kayaks in. And I think then now that things are finally getting to normal for them, it's, it's nice. Jim's big thing this year, you know, is charity. They've been super generous for, for years. I mean, every year they've, they've sponsored the club, um, but the, the important part for them is charity. I mean, they, they love their growing the sport. They love their getting, you know, their name out there, uh, yeah. but they really do care about giving back. And, and they like that, you know, we're a nonprofit. Everything's going to charity at the end of the day. So um, that's awesome. That's stuff. the good part. That's what keeps, that's what keeps the club going. It's, it's what keeps us volunteering. I mean, I, okay. I wouldn't do it if there wasn't, you know, a charity behind it. There's no reason for me to waste my time on it. Um, but well, we always got a good charity. When, it's awesome. And there, that's why there's guys like me out there that I can do that whole uh, you know, uh, talking about the fact that these are the companies that you want to support folks. I mean, that's, they're taking care of, you know, not just doing business, they're taking care of other organizations and your communities out there. And the best way you support them is when you have a product that they sell or whatever you go take, at least give them a fair shot at it. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. uh, that's, you know, one of the things we work with vicious fishing and shields, Colorado. I mean, they've, they've been phenomenal. Those two companies for us, you know, getting going. And so we try to, you know, do the same, but waterline is like right in line there. So that's exciting stuff. That is very exciting. I'd like to have that problem at the end of the year. So I'm hoping my four raffle tickets, you know, cause yes, it would put yeah. me in a very strange position uh, <laughs> there, but I'm okay with having that strange position. I'm sure we could find a good cause yeah. to do something there with and, uh, and take care of some stuff, but nevertheless, so opportunities for, for new sponsors out there. There's still plenty of time for people to get on for the year. Is that right? There, there is. So um, I'd like to get things wrapped up, um, you know, first of April, just to kind of at least have things spread out. I try and have you know, angler of the year packages and every tournament. Um, but I mean, if there was someone that wanted to get in late I and mean, we could always get them in, 
you know, late, they just want to get the, the full year of exposure. Um, but that's the nice part. We're, we're still a small enough club where we can, we can get creative if, if people want to get involved. Um, if not, we can at least set them up for the following year. Right. Well, and I think you, you said it earlier before the key on these sponsorship packages, the customization, which right. is, is like next level uh, sponsorship training. I mean, for, for folks that are new to it out there, each business is going to have its own unique needs. Some don't need as much digital media. Some need more, you know, so having a club that, you know, like you in your position, being able to customize, dude, that just, in my opinion, that just raises your value even more because you're paying attention to your, to your you know, sponsors and making sure you guys are delivering what they need. So that's, that's awesome stuff. Um, so let's, let's touch on it real quick. We were close to 4,000 members in the Facebook group. Is that right? We should be getting there. Yeah. If we haven't hit it yet, we're getting close to 4,000. Do we do much? Does the club do much on the on Instagram side? Uh, we do a little, some of the bigger stuff they'll put on there. Um, it, it's harder to, manage the actual events and, and follow stuff on Instagram, but we'll do some, some ads. I think Sawyer runs our Instagram for the most nice. part. And the club kind of all shares um, the Facebook posts and the, the tournament directors will start sharing a lot of their stuff as the tournament season comes up. But Facebook is our main place uh, to communicate. And then we have five tournaments on the bass series, five tournaments, multi-species, right? So 10 Correct. total Correct. for the season. Yep. And then I don't know if you saw today, but uh, Brett, the president actually posted the monthlies. So that's something new, something our, you know, our club's growing. We've got needs. We've got people that can't fish on Saturday, Sunday, but still want to compete um, and want to branch out. And sometimes it just makes it to where now, you know, pre-fishing is, is not just pre-fishing anymore. Now they can, you know, you can fish and put it on the, there's a walleye, a bass and a trout, uh, all separate tournaments. So those don't qualify you for the kayak. Um, it's just, just cash payouts there, no angler of the year or anything, but just something fun, something to kind of, um, uh, go along with some stuff, some of the tournaments that like KBF puts on, I was going to um, say it's, monthly it's, series. it's like very, what I was actually just talking to my wife today. And what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up for the Colorado kayak fishing club monthly for April and delay doing the KBF one, just because this is our first, you know, run at it. Yeah. I'm not quite sure where in the heck I'm going to go. <laughs> I mean, I got St. Vrain and Boyd. I'm like in Broomfield. So I'm just like right in the center of all this. Yeah. I haven't even touched any of like Stanley and I don't even know if it's even worth going to those. Um, Chatfield's yeah. a haul for me to get down there. It looks nice down there, but it, it's a haul. Um, yeah, you've got a, a lot of bass options up there. I mean, down here <laughs> we have bass in Pueblo, but if I do it, I'll probably do walleye just because early season, I would, I just, I'd rather chase walleye anyway. So it just makes it a little go. more fun for me, but we'll see. Yeah. I'll, I'll end up doing one of them at least for April. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking, you know, is we'll, we'll hit this first one here for April, uh, get used to some early, early spring for us out here, you know, fishing, and then we'll, we'll go dip our feet in the, you know, big show out there a little yeah. bit. So, well, listen, man, I can't thank you enough for, for taking time out of here for people out there, uh, organizations, businesses, if you know of people out there, um, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity for sponsorship with the, with the club. Um, we've talked about it. The demographics are there. You, if, you know, we can, you know, you can dig into that and drill into the demographics more, uh, to figure out, but it's, I mean, there's a reason why major multi-million dollar organizations back, you know, the angling world out there, you know, in Colorado uh, kayak fishing club is, is a exact proof to that. And dude, a kayak being given away. This is going to be huge. I'm, I'm going to have to circle back. Maybe we go live at the, uh, at the awards event. Who knows? We'll uh, I'll have yeah. to talk, talk with all the powers that be and see, uh, see what we got going there. But, uh, awesome stuff listen ronnie thank you again so very much for taking time out of uh, out of your schedule to join us here and uh, i can't wait to go out fishing with you dude it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast yeah we'll do it for sure just give me a shout sounds good Th thanks um, for having me and we'll uh, we'll make sure to put up uh, all the the contact piece as well your email i'll make sure we get uh, all that in the in our post-production piece here and we'll have it in the description of the uh, of the podcast out there so thanks for joining us folks uh, make sure to uh, give us the like subscribe that's the stuff that keeps us moving thank you for all of your support tight lines and be safe